today, the super built-in function in Python 3. Let's start with this definition of the super function at W3Schools, and it says, the super function is used to give access to the methods and properties of a parent or sibling class. Another explanation I really like is Raymond Hettinger's, and he said that super is in the business of delegating method calls to some class in the instance's ancestor tree. Let's see what this looks like in practice. So I've created two classes here, a parent and a child which inherits from the parent. And let's just run this right away and see that our response is hello and welcome printed out in the console. This print statement is coming from our child and we're calling the print message method from the child. X here is a child. But what's interesting is, is this child doesn't have a print message method. The print message method is here with the parent. And the reason we have access to this is because of the super function here. If we were to get rid of the super function and simply write pass, maybe, when we run this, we're going to get an error saying that the child has no attribute message. So we need that super to inherit from the parent. Now let's look at another example. In this second example, we again have two classes, a square and a cube that inherits from square. Now down the bottom, I have instantiated a cube, and we're going to print out that cube's area and volume uh, based on the fact that I'm passing a side of two to our cube. So we can print this out and see that our area is 24 and our volume is 8. The next thing we're going to do is make our cube more efficient, make our code better by using the super function. So here we're going to call super.area and basically import that area method from our square class. So this is just a shorter, better way to do it where we're not repeating that same method. And we'll do it down here with volume. We get our area calculation our area method imported into our cube, and we can run this again, and we get the same results uh, using super.area as we would have got if we did self.side times self.side. So again, super here gave us access to the methods and properties of our parent square. All right, now let's move on to our third example. So here we have a dog which is inheriting from the mammal class and a mammal class that's inheriting from the animal class. This is an example of multi-level inheritance. So where our second and first examples only had one level of inheritance, here we have two levels of inheritance. We have multi-level inheritance. And I'll just run this right away and you'll see that we're printing out the statements from all three of these classes. Now what would happen if I were to remove super from our dog? Well, we wouldn't have access to that mammal or that animal property, and we're only able to print out that our dog has four legs. What if I reinstantiated our super function here, but removed it from the mammal? Well, we can get access to the mammal because super gives us access to the one higher level. But since it's commented out under mammal, we don't get access to the animal. So you see that it doesn't say dog is an animal here. It only says um, the other two print statements. So here in this example, we're only inheriting print statements, but you can see how this is the exact same thing as if you were inheriting methods or inheriting attributes. Well, I think that's pretty much it. So let's bring this super method back. And let's say uh, is thankful for watching. <laughs> and now our dog is thankful for watching. Peace.